recently asked on Instagram what you struggle with the most when it comes to designing your home. And an overwhelming number of people said consistency, just consistency in design in general. You wanna know how to create that consistent look throughout every space of your home. So we decided to start this series where we talk about consistency through every finish from start to finish in your home. And it's my hope that at the end of all of these videos, you'll feel really confident in creating a design that you love, that feels consistent, and that you're just really proud of. This video is all about lighting. We're starting with lighting because it's one of my favorites, but you may be landing on this video after watching one of our other videos. You can just subscribe and then you can hit every video if you want. And I hope that you get some helpful tips out of it. If this is your first time here, my name is Chloe. I write the blog Boxwood Avenue. I have a shop called Boxwood Avenue Mercantile and we have an interior design business called Boxwood Avenue Interiors. Let's start off with a story about a young Chloe when she just got started in design and her struggle with lighting. So when I first started design, I was I designed my own home and I was kind of like, lighting, who cares about lighting? I want to talk about flooring, I want to talk about paint, I don't want to talk about lighting. And I guess it's just because I wasn't really confident with lighting and I really didn't know where to go look either. So I'll share my sources with you at the end of this video. But I'm going to give you five tips for creating consistency in lighting and how to get really confident in selecting lighting. This is what we do for our client process and this is sort of my journey and how I went from not really liking to select not really liking selecting lighting to now it's like my favorite thing ever. Lighting has such a huge impact and when I first started design it it was something that I kind of just put off towards the end. I didn't really put much thought into lighting. It was sort of like one of those cherry on top like if we find a great light great if not whatever it doesn't really matter and now like, oh my gosh I can't believe that was ever my thought process because now, honestly, we will even start with lighting and then all the other finishes kind of will go from our lighting selection. So when we start with lighting, we really want to make sure that everything is consistent, but that everything is really different enough so that each room has a different like emotion and a different vibe. Before I jump into my five tips, I wanna tell you how we actually start our lighting plan. Our process for starting the lighting selections is to start a Pinterest board and we just start like kind of brain dumping or brainstorming different lights we see. We'll go through some of our favorite websites. We really like circle lighting. I also really like Lamps Plus. It's so vast though, so you can get down a rabbit hole. Etsy also has some really great lighting selections. McGee & Co, um, Shop Amber Interiors has some good ones. I'll put some links to some of our favorite lighting shops in the description below. But we'll just go through the site, we'll pick out things. We're not necessarily selecting things at this point that we know we're going to use. We're just sort of pulling some inspiration, figuring out what direction we want to go. Once we've narrowed our Pinterest board down, I like to save all of the images and then I take them into a Canva board and I kind of group them room by room into the Canva board so we can see them all together. And we just want to make sure that there's a common thread. I think mixing, we're going to talk about mixing finishes, mixing shade styles, mixing styles, mixing sizes, all of that will look really good and will add a curated nice look. But you want to make sure that there is just like some sort of whisper that ties everything together. Once all of the images are on a Canva board, you can really see them together. And maybe there's one that stands out and you don't really like it, or maybe you feel like you're missing something. This just gives you like a really good starting point to create that consistent look throughout your home. That's kind of the back end work to get all of your ideas into one place so that you don't have five million different tabs open and you're trying to toggle through and see them together. Canvas is free, so it doesn't cost any money. Pinterest is also free. And I think that just taking this extra step, if you really do want that consistent look, that's what's going to set you up to make sure that everything looks really nice together. There are really three important factors that I look at when I'm trying to create this consistent look, and that's the finishes, the size, and the style. Let's talk about the finishes first. I was doing a little research about this topic before I started making this video and I have like a list of things I want to talk about. And I came across a blog post that talked about how you should have the same finishes throughout your home. And perhaps that will come back in style and maybe it's just out of style right now. But I personally think that mixing your finishes and mixing metals is going to make your home feel a little bit more curated, 
a little bit more interesting. I think it adds another level of dimension to your design. So I definitely encourage you to mix metals. You don't have to have the same finish. Like you don't have to have all chrome or all brass for every light fixture in your house. That's not what's going to create the consistency. Well, what will create the consistency is having, like I said, like that whisper, or that little thread that ties everything together. So when we're looking at mixing the finishes, we want to make sure that the metals pair really nicely together. So we want our brass finishes to all play nicely together. You don't necessarily have to match every single brass, but if you have multiple like brasses in your home, make sure that they're far enough apart so that it's not super obvious. Like make sure that they're different enough or far apart enough so that it doesn't look like you tried to match them and miss the mark. I really like to look at the finishes in either a real life picture, so we'll go find it on Pinterest or find it on a blogger's website or on like the listing website, or I like to order a sample of that finish because the internet can be deceiving, like the description pictures can be really deceiving. Oftentimes they have studio lighting when they're taking those pictures, so like a brass especially can pull really weird in a listing photo and then you get it and you're like, this doesn't even look like what it looked like on the internet. So if you can order a sample of the finish, that's going to help you a lot. If you can't, just try and find a real life picture of it on like a blogger site, Pinterest, or if the uh, brand has like a lifestyle shot. Some metal combinations that we like to use are brass and bronze and black. You can also mix nickel in there. Nickel has a little bit of warmth to it and it's not as stark as chrome. I actually like chrome. I think that chrome's kind of coming back. It looks a little bit more contemporary. And so if I'm doing chrome, it's usually in a more contemporary or modern uh, kitchen or project. And we'll do some black with that. I wouldn't necessarily mix like bronze with chrome. Those seem like they compete a little bit with each other. But I love mixing bronze with brass. It's actually kind of hard to find a matte black light. A lot of lights you see will be a like rubbed bronze or oil rubbed bronze. And if that's the case, I like to mix nickel or brass. Then we take a look at the shade style and we want to make sure that we don't have too many, too much repetition because then that starts to fall flat and feel boring. So we don't want to, we don't want all of our shades to be a certain style. And we also want to make sure that if we do have like a linen shade, that the shades are different enough from each other that it doesn't look like we tried to match them and then missed the mark. So that's what's really great about having all of the images of the lights on a single board because then you can really compare the styles. So if, um, like let's say you have your living room light and you have an open kitchen and you want to, it to coordinate really well with your kitchen light, you could have um, like a cone-shaped kitchen pendant and then a bulbous or round living room chandelier. So they're two different styles um, so that they don't you don't look like you're trying to match them and then it just kind of looks funny. Lastly, we think about size. And in my humble opinion, most kitchens have pendants that are just way too small. I really like a larger light. I like two pendants rather than three, although there are certainly kitchens that have like an English kitchen, you'll see three smaller pendants and that look is really intentional and it's intentionally done. So if you have this English style kind of country kitchen, by all means, go for it. But just make sure that your lights are intentionally sized. Uh, I think if you're in doubt, bigger is better. With that said, kitchen pendants, I like to be about 14 inches up to 18 inches. I don't particularly like a kitchen pendant that goes lower than 14 inches unless you have three and you have to do three lights then you can get away with like 9 to 11 inches. You want about 30 inches in between each light um, not measured from center to center from the edge of the light to the edge of the light. I've made that mistake before. <laughs> Those are really the three things, the finish, the size, and the, sh and the style that we use to coordinate all of the lights. I want to also give you a couple tips if you are selecting lighting or buying lighting because uh, I've made some mistakes. <laughs> and if I can share my mistakes with you, then you don't have to make them. 
Uh, the first thing being is check the specs because you could have this, the most beautiful light ever picked out and then you hire an electrician, they put in a standard um, box and then your light comes and the back plate doesn't fit or something. So share your specs. Every light will have the specs on it online. Even like big box stores will provide you with specs. Take those specs and share them with your contractor or your electrician and really communicate the, the back plate style, the, the way that it's going to hang. If you have a sloped ceiling, it's really important to know, know if the light is going to hang at a slope or if you need to order something different. Uh, you need, if you have super high ceilings, make sure that the light can come down far enough that, so that it's not floating way high up in the ceiling. Those are little things that you don't know are important until it's too late, you've already bought the light, you've already got your electrician or contractor there, and then you're just like, oh my gosh, this is so annoying. Check all the specs, talk through the specs with your contractor. Even if I've worked with a contractor multiple times, we still run into issues with lighting. I don't know what it is, it's just a tough one because lighting has to be planned at the beginning of the project. And so you sort of have to, We this is why we pick lighting first, you have to have like, future vision to see uh, where the lights are going to go, how they're going to be hung, at what height they need to be hung, their placement, all of those things have to be tackled at the beginning of the project. So really just talk through your, talk with your contractor through all of those specs because it is super important. With all that said, I definitely am a huge advocate for saving and splurging in projects. If we all had endless budgets, it would be so fun to just spend all of our money on everything we ever wanted in design there's always a balance. Lighting is definitely something that I really like to splurge on. I think it makes a huge difference in design. It really affects the mood. Think about a beautiful long hallway. You could have just a boring long hallway or you can add some amazing lights and make it this, this draw dropping hallway of dreams. When we're thinking about style, I think that you can mix a mid-century with a traditional, with a modern. I think that you can totally pull that off. I think it's just important to really get that overall look where you can see them all together and make sure that there is that little, you'll be able to just intrinsically see it. If it feels off, it's probably gonna look off. So find an alternative to that light fixture. When we do this, we'll, we will mix something that feels really feminine with something that feels really masculine. But at the end of it, there will always be that little connection point, whether that's it's the same finish, it's the same brand, it has the same kind of like chain detail, there will always be something that ties it together, and that's what I really like about creating the Canva board where we can see it all in one spot. I really hope that you found this video helpful and that it helps you create a cohesive lighting plan for your home. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos about cohesive design. You can always visit me at boxwoodavenue.com for more sources, tips, and inspiration.